This video is going to be all about the Petrol Hedonism Underground Show, where there's going to be some EVs. Not many, but I'm going to be here supporting Felton. Let's go. So here she is. She's a beaut, isn't she? Before this video starts, I think it's really important uh, to let you know that I feel a bit guilty. And I'm guilty because I feel like I've let the car community down. Because I've been so blinkered in EVs that I've forgotten about all of my kind of passion for just cars in general, whether it's petrol or EV. And I think you'll watch this video and you'll realise that I'm trying to not look at the petrol cars, I'm not trying to get excited by them, but I am. And ultimately, I do, <laughs> I do give in and I start getting into the petrol cars. Yes, EVs are better ultimately for clean air. Yes, and it's gonna go that way, whatever. But there'll always be you know, petrol cars around. I just thought I'd admit that to my uh, viewers and subscribers uh, before <clears throat> you watch the rest of this video. And we're going in with my man, Sham from Autonomous. So there's actually, oh look, it's Chiro. Here he is, <laughs> the man with the plan. How we doing, mate? Right. Yeah, looks good, mate. Looks good. Have a good show. There we go, the man himself, Chiro. He didn't say any negative EV stuff yet, but I'm sure there'll be plenty of time for that. So we've got some very exciting exotica here. Okay, well, this is pretty cool. I'm not really into the hypercar stuff normally, but stuff like this, I mean, wow. Absolute legends. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I prefer the older Lambos, to be fair, so I'm not going to worry too much time. But where we're heading is right over there, because that's where Felton are. Got some electric cars over there doing a bit of drifting. Let's go and have a look. Who says electric cars can't be fun? I mean, check these out. I love an S14. If anyone's known me, I've had three S14s. Love a bit of drifting. Wow, look at the color on this. That is beautiful. Loving that. The snails on that. We better make our way to the electric stand, really. Represent. The diesel truck crew. Cough, cough. You're representing the diesel hedonism. <laughs> You can see it looks like they've started. Looks like I got in early. Obviously, the, the pink pass uh, got me in earlier, which is a winner. Right, come on, we better go to this electric section. Although it's very difficult when you see cars like this. M3, probably an Evo. Very pink TT. Do, 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 do. Oh yeah, I love an R32. It's one car I wish I had actually bought at some point in time. Nice Evo, nice. GTR 34, very good. Nice MX-5. Oh, nice Scooby. And there's Chris having a chat with someone on the old Caterham. And there's the Porsche plugged into the Zappi, just so people know. So this is where I am at the moment. It's getting really busy now, uh, really in full swing. Uh, obviously in the EV section, Felton, we've got the Mini, we've got the Defender, which looks amazing. Gonna have to take a look at that later. And we've got their EV converted Porsche. It's done 230,000 miles when they bought this thing. Unbelievable. Uh, but yeah, we're getting loads of attention from the EV breakers, Tesla. So uh, unfortunately the guys from uh, EV Breakers aren't here today, um, but I'm helping uh, answer any questions for them because I love it. But yeah, it's gonna be a really good event. I can't wait to tell lots of petrol heads about the exciting things about EVs, EV conversions and modified EVs and hopefully dispel a few myths at the same time. So we're at the um, Felton stand. I'm just going to make a move and go and get some food and go to the other area. It's getting really busy in here. 
um, still not actually looked around the whole event. But I thought, while well, I need to go and get some food, I'll go and check out the other garage because there's another garage right over there. Look what I found in the corner. So I can actually some nice wheels on it. It's pretty tasty. Some brown. Uh, I don't know about the wheels. I would definitely curb them. Look how much they stick out. Oh dear. I'm in an RS4 engine shed with a Passat. What mark? Passat? Uh, B5. B5 interior. And with Kevin, I'm in a shed and it's probably the most comfortable chair I've ever sat in. 199,000 miles. So this yeah. was a Passat full motion. Well, I, I've driven it as a shed. I've done uh, <laughs> I've about 90,000 miles. Not 90,000 miles? Yeah. I, drive all over the country. I live in Oxfordshire, down in London today. Last weekend I was up in Yorkshire, uh, then down to Santa Park, then back home. Did over 500 miles last weekend. Are you okay to be in the camera shot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. this is Kevin. We've been having a long, we've been having a long chat, a very interesting chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, and this is, oh, I can't believe how comfortable this is sitting. I've been kind of, I've been standing next to it talking to Kevin and it's it's obviously a bit of an eyesore. It's a shed with wheels. What the f <laughs> Okay, it's got hydraulics as well. Can I give it a rev? Yeah. It's definitely got a 4.2 V8 in it. And uh, what? so what's in the boot, Kevin? Uh, in the back, it's empty in the back, so Coming here today, I brought the world's fastest motorised wheel barra and the world's fastest motorised BMX. The red barra. Uh, yeah, the... I've just rebranded it. So hopefully I'm going to do something with the red arrows, but they don't know it yet. This is... <laughs> I've got some Guinness World Records certificates up here. I've got seven Guinness oh, World wow. Records. Uh, I hold about 180 UK and ITA speed records. No way. There's... So what's the quarter mile... Um... 113 miles an hour. What what sort of um, uh, how many seconds to do the quarter? Uh, the best ever quarter I did was over at the Isle of Man, but I did 14.65 at 98.5 miles an hour. Nice. Um, you got bear in mind it weighs two and a half tons and it's not aerodynamic, so no. I struggle have off the line and I struggle at the other end. Have you thought about maybe a front a front piece to make it more aerodynamic? Doesn't work. Does it not? No, the back is the problem, not the front. Uh, of course it is. Of course, it's how silly of me. It's, it's, uh, I've learnt a lot, but I never built it to race it. That's just kind of happened. And uh, now I, I race with straight liners, which they, they're who set most speed records in the UK. Okay. Do you ever go Bonneville? Uh, no, I, I'd like to. I keep getting asked to go to the Nürburgring, um, <laughs> but. <laughs> Even though it's legal to drive in Europe, sometimes the police over there, well, they've got a habit of impounding cars. <laughs> and I don't need that much hassle in my no, life. No, no. Right. Let's keep going. So we've got, the, uh, we've got the BMX, which is 23 brake horsepower. Kevin, what, what brake horsepower was the BMX? Um, 27. 27. And what, uh, what motor is on that? Oh, it looks... I'm, Special. It's a 190cc full race engine. It's got a lot of trick stuff in it. It's got four valve head on it. But I'm just trying to set it up, set the gearing up at the moment to redo my own Guinness record because I've got some challenges for it. So I need to raise the bar somewhat. So, so there's actually gears on it as well. Yes, full speed. Boys. With that engine, you can't you, you can't give it any throttle in first and second. It just picks front straight up. It's actually got uh, bigger wheels than my uh, 1970s tricycle. Are they they look like 18. Yeah, inch. they're, they're um, Honda Cub wheels. They are. I love the um, the tyres. They're actually quite chunky, aren't they? They are pretty chunky. The, we, this has just been through scrutineering. I've got two little jobs to do to it. But we worked out the speed rating for these tyres. They're high right. speed rated. Okay. So the back one's 112, the front's 106, Shut speed rate. Really? So we're safe on the tyres. 
I don't think mine are more than 30 on the trike, which is a worry. And what's what's the engine in this red, uh, the Red Baron, so, I want to call it. So it was a <laughs> Honda XAR50 and with a company called PM Tuning. We turned that into a full race 70cc. Wow. The amount of work that, that he did on that, uh, two strokes are an absolute science. Right. I've learned. Okay. And that went from six horsepower to 14 and a half. Wow. And I've done 53.85 miles an hour. And in a minute, I, I film you doing it. I'll let you stand on the plate so you can see, get a feel of what it's like. I'm I not sure about this. I, won't <laughs> let, I can't let you ride it here. No, no, it's probably best. That, Especially after a cider. If, if you think these <laughs> machines are mental, that is the most mental thing I've ever driven in my life. Well, I'd like to say that mental is my middle name. It's not, unfortunately, but this looks hilarious. Team leader, beautiful. See, this is what I love, the weird and wonderful uh, petrol hedonism. Well, I've just, uh, I, yeah, I've just rebranded this. I only had the stickers done this week. And, and it's, oh, quite, really? it's quite, yeah, because it, it was the barrow with speed. Uh, it was silver, but this, this, this is to mimic the, the red arrows, and this is humour, display team, but there's only me. <laughs> so what Love have I it. got on the back? Team leader. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Stay on target. That's just humour. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so we've got v, V6 Quattro badge. Fastest shed. I left the V6 on again, because that's humour. Right. So why is it humour that it's got V6 instead of V8? Because if you go to some events and you'll, you'll get people, oh, it's got a shitty V6 in it, and then you open the bonnet and watch their chin hit the floor. Oh. That's my double those bed. The, those aren't the exhausts. No, that's aerodynamic. <laughs> oh. So that's my double bed. That, that piece of wood, that pulls down, that sits across here. Yeah. And then I've got heating. Diesel heating? Yeah, yeah. Chinese diesel heater. Brilliant. Okay, so you've got some drain pipes for aerodynamics? Yeah, because yeah, the problem's the back, not the front. Um, yes. I've learned so much about aerodynamics because I well, haven't got you, any. Well, of course you would. You've got a shed but on wheels. <laughs> a lot of Brilliant. people just think it's the front. Yeah. Um, when you start getting really technical, the front doesn't help the back. The problem is always the back. Yeah. And if you look at all the early um, top speed cars, mm. they were come to a point at the back. Yep. There was no computers. But they got it right, how it how it really worked. 1927, Malcolm Campbell did 174 miles an hour on Pendine Sands. And so in roughly 100 years, there's only five people gone faster. Uh, and I'm fortunate enough to know the fastest man on sand who's still alive, a chap called Terry Smith on a motorbike, 198 mile an hour. Wowzers. The, the <laughs> fastest ever was... Sadly, he's passed away now. Uh, a chap called Zeff Eisenberg, he did 201. Browsers. Is it your daily? Um, yeah, I go shopping in it. Uh, yeah. and, uh, it takes up a few spaces. No, uh, it's I reckon. an optical illusion. It's an optical illusion. So it, it, it only takes up, what, every, one space? Every, every vehicle comes in at the top and your eye always looks at the top, not at the bottom. Okay. You know, even the van that's behind us that comes in at the top. Yeah, it comes in. Yeah, okay. The front of the shed fixes on where the original car fixes on. What I have done is move the windscreen forward and put it upright. And it just gives the illusion that I'm sat a long way back. Look at that car there. The back She's seats a beaut. are roughly in between the back wheels. Yeah. Are you sat a long way back in that car? No, you're not. Move the windscreen a foot down the bonnet and put it upright. All of a sudden, you're sat a long way back. Kevin, I'll, I'll leave it there because I know I've taken up a lot of your time. Thank you very, very much indeed. It pleasure. was wonderful to meet Absolute you, sir. Pleasure. Absolutely. We and uh, we could. Next time you're at Santa Pod, give me a call. So I've just ended up spending about two hours talking to Kevin about his world's fastest shed and many other things, including his BMX, which is mental, and his wheelbarrow, which is epic. 50 mile an hour wheelbarrow is just bananas. So uh, lovely guy, knows a lot and yeah appreciates a bit of electric so we were getting on really well um and all cars which is obviously what i like as well but yeah let's see what else we can find it's been an amazing show really really good
Right, we were just wandering, trying to find some other exciting cars, and I found one. I found a modified Tesla Model 3, and it's Motion R behind me. They did the Vanbo, the uh, the modified van for uh, Chiro's pe petrohedonism. And yeah, there's some really, really nice kit on this Tesla behind me, and I've got Jake, and he's gonna tell us all about it. Take it away, Jake. How are you doing, Tim? Are you okay? Pleasure to meet you. So this is our Tesla Model 3 Performance. As you can see, it's redesigned by Motion R. So we've got the 20 inch forged alloys on it, redesigned bumpers, all genuine carbon fiber. You've got your side skirts. If you follow me around to the back, Tim, as you can see an added carbon fiber spoiler. Do you know what brand the carbon fiber spoiler is? Because that is beautiful. I don't, but I will find out for you, Tim. Lovely. You've got your splitter. Sorry, diffuser, that's my bad. And if you want to have a look at the interior with me, yeah. we also do that as well, mate. Carbon fiber steering wheel, all redesigned leather, everything done by us, motion art. Underneath this vehicle is in white, but this is an Aston Martin wrap on it. Again, it'd be nice if you come down to the showroom and see what else we do, mate. Awesome, thank you very much, Jake. As you can see, a really tidy Model 3 looks great in the green, and I think we'll take Jake up on that because it sounds like they've got a few more of these beautiful modified Tesla Model 3s. So watch this space. Right, that is it for day one. I've decided to knock off early because I'm going to be here tomorrow. I believe there is a party tonight. Didn't get invited, unfortunately. Maybe next time. Uh, but yeah, going to leave everyone to it. Get back and ready for tomorrow. No, back, no doubt everyone's going to be fairly uh, hungover. Uh, but I did get to meet Tavarish. Tavarish? Uh, Tavarish? Tavarish, that's it. Uh, earlier, said hello to him, shook his hand, which was nice. Um, and yeah, I missed the EV, ice versus EV thing. I was too busy talking to Kevin and his shed, but that was really interesting. Uh, but there is another EV versus ice debate tomorrow. So we'll be here tomorrow to check that out. I keep spotting cars that I haven't seen yet. What an absolute beauty of a Capri. RS wheels, is this a Brooklyn's? Uh, I don't know. Someone whack it in the comments. Here we go. Ah, that's it. Turbo Technics. Sick. Love a retro. Oh, yeah. Look at the Pioneer speakers. Here we are again for day two of Petrol Hedonism event. I'm not sure that I'm going to actually find any more EVs here, so I thought, let's go and ask some people what they think of EVs, modified and EV conversion. So let's go and find some uh, people to talk to. So we're at the beginning of day two, and I've got Chiro with me. He's going to tell me a little bit about how much he hates EVs. <laughs> no, what I hate is, let's get it clear, is being forced to accept it when I think it's an alternative. Yep. And it's an alternative that's great. My auntie Jackie, she lives and breathes by it, but it works for her. For me, it doesn't. I want the rumble, I want the feeling, I want the sensations of combustion. However, I did drive the Felton Mini, and it put a smile on my face. The first car I ever drove when I was 16 and learning in the field was my uncle's Mini, and that was fun. And that EV Mini, with the torque, with the bounce, with everything, just reminded me of that and it put a smile on my face. So, as an alternative, would I have an EV Mini to get around my local town? 100%. There's a controversial for you. There we go. Controversial. <laughs> Petra Hiddenism. Chiro has just said he liked an electric oh, car. Electro Hiddenism? Oh, uh oh, uh oh. There's competition in the wings. We've also got Mark here, who I've just met, who uh, is very much into his petrol cars. What is it you drive, Mark? I actually drive a Focus STX. 
Nice, very nice. And uh, you mentioned that you'd uh, recently been to America SEMA and yep. you've seen some cool electric cars. What, what was your thoughts on them? So before I went to SEMA, I, a bit like Giro, if I'm being honest. Like, yeah, I'm not all about that. But when I went to SEMA, my mind was blown away. Out there, they convert a lot of older cars, but put electrics in it, and it's becoming even cooler. And I got to see a couple of them being test drove out there, and I've blown away. It changed my opinion about EV cars. Wicked. So uh, what would be the car that you would electrify, Mark? Do you want to like to see, which I'm going to get absolutely ridiculed for this, <laughs> I'd like to see a Skyline dog. Oh, controversial. 33, 32, 34. 34. Oh, blue and egg. Yeah, that's going to be an expensive one. Only, only because it would be a game changer in a sense. I think it may. At first, people would hate it. But I do think over time, it might change their opinion. Mark, I think blood will be spilled uh, if the R34 is done. Um, but I know that there is a 33 that's been done and a 32, so you never know. I mean, if you follow like, uh, like the bars and all that stuff, they just talk about the EV stuff, don't they? And obviously, I think we have to accept it's coming. It's, it's, it's already come, mate. Ooh. But it's becoming bigger, <laughs> but becoming bigger. <laughs> bigger. I mean, there's a lot more when you're out, especially in America, it's more spoke about. Yeah. No, absolutely, and this is what I'm trying to do with charge heads. We've got EV breakers uh, here in their modified Tesla. What's your thoughts on the modified EV world? I like it. What I've seen today, and especially what I've in America, it's very cool. Wicked. Mark, thank you very much indeed, and uh, no doubt we'll see you later in the show. Excellent. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks, mate. It's getting quite a crowd around the uh, Porsche now. Everyone having a look at the battery. Oh, it's always good to see when there's uh, loads of interest on the EV stuff and I'm just sat at the Tesla EV breakers car and I tell you what everyone stops and looks and they love it but here we are with people checking out the Porsche as well and every time I say did you know that after talking to them about the Tesla did you know that the Porsche is electric their uh, mouth hits the ground and then they go and have a closer look be good to see these in action a bit more i think that's what people need to see but yeah the i think it's busier than yesterday now so we've got the ev chat just about to start so i'm just trying to get into position uh it'd be really interesting to see how this goes it's not much of a crowd at all which isn't surprising so uh let's see how it goes Tavares, over in my little corner is here. We've got Chris Belton and Ewan Thomas and his Tesla are not going to join us today, but we have Auto Alex and his how many hundred thousand mile Tesla? 451,000 miles and still going strong. Is that it? Have you got a Tesla with higher mileage? No, shut up. No, no, but I don't, I don't need one. Why not? Well, are we starting early? We, we could be starting early. Okay. Where do you stand? on EV versus ice. So yesterday I was very much on the side of internal combustion, but today I feel like I should I should be on the side of EVs because you know what? I have done my research and I feel like EVs are the future. So Shut I'm, up. I'm, what are you I'm gonna be fighting all of you guys. You're so fickle. How can anyone trust this man's opinion if he switches within 24 hours? Chris he wasn't Felton, Italian. kind of for everybody that doesn't know Felton, one of our main sponsors, tell us about you and Felton. So Felton, we uh, started six years ago. We design, develop, manufacture systems to convert classics to electric. So you convert classic cars to electric. Uh, they're based over there. Minis, Land Rovers. Yeah, we rip the heart out of them, we just destroy them, we chuck them out. Make them soulless. Them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely soulless. Yeah. Now, we make them great. They, they're daily drivers, they get enjoyed now. They, you know, people have a historic nostalgia. Um, like you with the Mini. Well, we'll talk about that. I've had 24 hours uh, too. Brilliant. <laughs> good, good, good. We've all thought and we, we've all had a change of heart. Do well, I have him? What, what side are you on? I don't know, Chiro, what side am I supposed to be on again? No, you be wherever you want to be. Don't be a fickle American. All right, I won't be a fickle American. <laughs> okay, so you're pro-EV. I'm going to be pro-EV, Okay, because yes. we don't really like each other, I'm going to be pro-ice. Good, good. I want to fight with my own ice. Shall we, shall we just end this here? Who, who likes ice over EV? Put your hands up. No hands oh, over there you go. Get up, get up. 
Okay, so we just started, so all of you will be converted, and I will tell you why. Wow. You Hold on a minute, so by the end of this, he's putting the hybrid motors and electric motors back in his P1. No, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna oh. do that. I'm not gonna do that. You're gonna put a Felton system in there. No, maybe, maybe, that, that, that would be cool. So, I want you guys, the, the people that are on the internal combustion side, give me your best arguments of why internal combustion is better than electric, electric vehicles. Don't look at me, it's the... I'm looking at you, no, you, no, you, got, you got those eyes and you're like, I'm about to say something. <laughs> Why is your Toyota GR Yaris better than a Honda E? Well, because for a start, it's great value for money. It's a homologation special. It doesn't have a fish tank that you can press. It doesn't fart. You can't play Xbox in it. It's a driver's car. That's why. It's a driver's car. There you have it. Give yeah, it. I'm on Team EV as well. Just because I've got a Yaris doesn't mean that I'm not on TV, Team EV. No. It's the future. We don't have a choice. I would jump in though. I am pro ice at the moment. I do have a really high mileage Tesla, Model S 90D. It is rapid, it's good fun off the lights, and it is also a very, very good handling car. However, that's where it stops. Okay, so it's actually funny because one of my friends, my best friend, uh, actually got a Tesla 90D to 2016, doesn't have 450,000 miles, had 50,000 miles, and he got it for about 17,000 USD, which is like, what, like 35 pence or something here? About that, yeah. yeah. And it is the best practical car you can buy, and I think that's why EVs are the future, because I understand that we're all here because we love cars. We love that, you know, they make a crazy amount of noise, they make smoke, they make, you know, they, they make us feel something, right? But we make up a very small percentage of the population. The people that are actually moving and shaking the car industry, they're out there in traffic right now. Those are the people that are buying cars as appliances. And those are the people that are running cars, the internal combustion cars, into the ground. For that, EV is absolutely the future. Because those people, you put them in a Tesla Model 3 or anything in that price range, that car is gonna be the best car they've ever had. It has two pedals, you don't have to worry about a gear shift. It has no maintenance. And it's also, I mean, it looks futuristic. It has the stuff that, you know, makes it fart or whatever, but it, but it has a good sound system. It's really quiet. It's a nice place to be. And it doesn't waste anything when you're on, when you're stuck in traffic. So for that, the EV is absolutely the future. This is never gonna go away. Think about what happened when the uh, horses were no longer used as transportation. Horses are now like coveted. They are, you know, just recreational use. They, you know, you go to a horse track and you know, it's really kind of high society stuff. Just like this will all be when EVs are like, you know, the, the beasts of burden of old. So this stuff never gonna go away. I'm sure we'll get synthetic fuels and this will, there will always be a place for this, but EVs absolutely have to be the next step forward. So we just had the EV versus ICE event. It's the second one, because I missed the other one. Too busy talking to RS4 Shedman. And uh, yeah, it was just, you know, obviously a bit one-sided, but Tavarish was the voice of reason, and obviously Chris from Felton, that, you know, both are available until whenever they're available, and that there's cool things you can do with ICE, cool things you can do with EV. Most importantly, EVs are great daily drivers, which is what Tavarish, Tavarish was actually getting to. Um, but she talks cars and uh, Chiro, they've still got some uh, learning to do. And uh, Alex from Auto Alex, I'm not sure about uh, what he was talking about, although he's a good laugh. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. This is the end of the uh, Petrolism show. There's a couple of hours left, but there's nothing really else EV that we can really talk about here. Really looking forward to the EV festival that's coming up at the end of the month. So I'm going to be focused on that. Um, we've got seven modified EVs there. We've also got um, got a couple of EV conversions there. I'm not sure if the wedge is going to be there. Uh, we'll see. Uh, no promises. Um, but don't forget, uh, th this Thursday coming, we've also got TiVo. That's going to be great for Thursday's 8 p.m. Charge Heads Live. So that's going to be really, really good. But I've been really surprised at Better Headers and Show. Really enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, I'll definitely be coming to the next one for sure. Might even have an electric TVR. Thanks for watching.